Ocean 7, the most mental and physical endurance sport. Coming up, the unpredictable Cook Strait. The Strait is a channel between the North and South Islands of New Zealand, one of the most challenging stretches of water in the world. 26 kilometers of cold, rough water, strong tidal flows, sharks and other abundant marine life. To attempt and complete it successfully remains one of the few real Everest challenges left in the world. What makes the strait so treacherous is a combination of violent currents and huge fast flowing tides. 22 kilometer wide at its narrowest point linking the Tasman Sea to the Pacific Ocean. The waves are squeezed through, stacking up and going in all sorts of directions. The floor of the strait adds to its complex behavior. A vast canyon creates a tidal engine pushing and pulling the water. Yo, brother, we're checking in here, yeah. Swiss Alps. Get it, man. And we just want to give you some energy here uh, and uh, know that you can make it, bro. We had some ice swims today, little dips there in the sauna. And um, yeah, you can smash it, bro. What do you say? Thinking of you, man. Thinking of you. Stay strong, man. It's easy. You got this. You got it. Okay. Come on! Tony, let's get it, man. We're with you, brother. Yeah! Tony, I just wanted to wish you everything the best as you go across to do your swim in New Zealand. You've got the power, you've done the hard work, mate. You've done all the training and you're mentally strong enough to get it done. We're all behind you. All the best, my brother. Tony, Scott here, mate. Uh, I was going to type your message, but I thought, why don't I send you a video instead? And just want to let you know we're, we're really proud of you, mate. We know you're going to smash this and uh, sending all our strength to, to make sure you, you kill it. And uh, mate, when things get tough, and I, I know they're going to get tough there, just uh, think about sitting on the terrace overlooking the lake. Now we've got a big lump of meat sitting on the grill, cooking nicely. We've got a uh, nice glass of red in front of us that we're sipping on. We've got some great tunes playing on the on the stereo. And uh, mate, I just want you to think about how much sweeter that's all going to taste and smell when you, you smash this swim. Go well, my friends. Bro, you know what? Uh, always heard so many great things about New Zealand. Uh, obviously, the camaraderie with the Rugby World Cup and everything else, and a few friends and family living on the side, I always knew it was beautiful. Living in Switzerland and Cape Town, two best uh, other places in the world. But New Zealand uh, just been absolutely amazing. Uh, the beauty and the the topography and the landscapes from mountains to vineyards to oceans to the rivers and the lakes. And again, the people so humble, the, you know, Ralph and Michelle um, inviting them to their, their family home. Uh, yeah, it's just been absolutely amazing. And just another point of just, you know, going with the flow of these adventures and these journeys and having no expectations is the most exciting part about Ocean 7, not just about the swim and the challenges, but the cultures and the people that you meet and the, uh, the landscapes um, of this incredible world. Now, this has been quite a journey, uh, firstly to get here, uh, with the Ocean 7, there's one thing training for it, there's a second thing, you know, trying to get a swim slot, Infinity um, Charters in Ireland, um, put me on to uh, Catabatic Charters here in New Zealand, uh, Grant, um, and it's been, you know, two years in the making, five years trying to get this swim slot, you need to get the mindset, because there's these gremlins start coming to your mind, oh, it's cold, 12.13, you know, there's currents, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be, you know, this this stuff is not made for, for sissies. And, and that's why there's less than 40 people that have done the Ocean 7. Linda from Hawaii uh, was always said that when, before you get into the water, give a gift to the ocean. So, um, one of the, the swims that we did in Molokai, when I left uh, Molokai Island, I got a turtle uh, from the island. So, um, it's, it's very important to give a gift to the ocean. In South African flag moments, goggles, a cap, uh, got the little gift from uh, the protector of uh, the, the the stone which is safe passage through water. There was a gift from my friend Marcelo um, and then just making sure prep you know Vaseline, 
with sunscreen is going to be sun on my back most of the time so very very important and then having the South African flag with all the people that have been part of this journey from the beginning to every single friend and family member that signed the flag just you know they they're coming through this journey uh, with us we're gonna have a whiteboard which uh, all our friends and family can send us messages which I see as well which is a motivator glow sticks we we'll gonna be swimming in the dark for about two hours, which is my relief because normally we swim six to twelve hours in the dark. Should really go real when Grant said the temperatures. Uh, we were expecting, if you look at all the media, uh, we we're expecting temperatures between 15 and 17 degrees. You know, starting at 17, maybe dropping to 15, and all of a sudden he threw the bomb out and said, "Yeah, uh, we've had northerly winds, uh, messy weather, and the water's between 12 and 13 degrees." The other big thing was. Uh, we thought we would be swimming from Wellington side, so we're from the North Island to the South Island. We swapped that around where we're swimming from South to North. Uh, but I think we got ourselves a great position starting, you know, uh, getting to the harbour at 2.45. We're going to get out of the harbour um, at Picton at 3 o'clock. We'll get to our resting spot so we can uh, prep, I can prep 5 in the morning. So get going at probably around quarter past 5 Sunday morning, uh, which is going to be the 18th. Um, and it's actually quite surreal, so very emotional for me, this one, because uh, uh, literally two, day, two years uh, today and tomorrow is when uh, my dad passed away. Number five, let's do it. Polisan of Schwitz for you. And South Africa. And the family and friends. All of you guys. Rock, live life now, that matters now. Swim start. Swim start. 527.
Where's our uh, direction actually? Oh, there, okay. okay. I want to show you the beauty I see through my eyes, glowing in the moonlight, flickering through black and blue skies. Black and blue, it's what I do. It's time to see through. Romeo, Romeo, so all understood and received. So you guys have a good one, and uh, we'll hear from you in a couple of hours. Uh, this is Wellington Maritime, the journey one six. Thank you, and out. Uh, stay closer to the boat, please. Something lovely, bro. Stay a bit closer to us, okay, buddy? You can let it go. Stay square. Go, Tony! Go, boy! says it's going to be this way till about midday. It doesn't hurt me if you want to feel how I feel. You want to know, know that it doesn't hurt me. You want to see about the deal I make it. You
Good job, Greg. Good job. Good job. <coughs> Tony, we, Keep going. We're so close. Tony, we are so close. We're so close. Come on. Keep the positive. Keep the positive now. We're right here. Well done, mate. Oh, he's yeah, take bring your time. Us take, 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 go to the back. Yeah. Just wait. Just wait.
Hi guys, um, I've never been in such a mind war my entire life. It was absolutely insane, uh, it's very emotional. Um, I'm going to give you guys a debrief uh, tomorrow, too much going through my head. I had war with myself, I've never swam in conditions like that in my entire life. But I just want to thank you for all your love and your support, uh, energy and the messages. Uh, well, I'm absolutely broken, battered. Uh, no words can describe what I'm feeling, but thank you guys for all your love, support. Uh, I'm glad that's over. Uh, I think uh, four days uh, after the swim, letting everything sink in um, and just, you know, thinking what we went through as a team, uh, emotionally, uh, sure, one roller coaster ride of notes. I'm just glad it's over, glad we finished, glad we were successful. Uh, and she's super stoked to say that we, uh, we, we number five done, two to go. You know, with these type of swims, um, there's, uh, there's only so much you can do. The start went really, really well, um, got bumped by something <laughs> and then luckily the guys and the team saw uh, dolphins and that so it's always nerve wracking getting into the water in the pitch black and you've got flashing lights and glow sticks on you. Um, and you know, again, your mind you know, can start spinning story, stories and I just broke away and said, listen, go with the flow, get in the water, swim, uh, and our, our decision was to swim for an hour before having a bit of a break, especially the Cook Strait. Is, it's one of the most dangerous uh, oceans in the world. I played it down a little bit. I thought it was gonna be a little bit of a walk in the park at the beginning, and I just couldn't get into a rhythm. It was bumpy, it was choppy. The current was running from left to right, it was out and then uh, I had about probably 15 minutes of when the sun came up and that just got me in a good spirit and started striking hard and long um, and then all of a sudden I was in a messy washing machine and from that point all the way to the end um, I didn't feel like I was in control. Now listen, uh, that was the toughest stretch of water I've ever experienced, um, there was no part of that swim that was easy. Expectations were, you know, a straight line, 22 to 26 k's. A little bit of a strategy that when we hit 7 k's, the Swiss flag would come out. Then at halfway, just past halfway, the South African flag would come out. Um, our plans were, you know, recorded. I knew exactly what I wanted, and everything went to, to completely to the dogs because it was rough. I remember seeing Michelle putting the Swiss flag on, almost falling into the water. Uh, it was rough, you know, on a bodyboard in, in, in the shore break in, in Globe Strand is different to be in the middle of the ocean and getting rolled by freak waves because it can plan it. Um, and at that point, uh, I was thought, okay, this is when shit's getting real. Uh, and again, trying to keep myself in a, in a, a good uh, space of mind. Um, and the crew got me through. I mean, Michelle and Andrew, you guys just really got me through. Grant was amazing. Um, I didn't know how far I'd, uh, I swam, um, but you know, getting to 20 k's in three hours, um, and if you had to swim like a, in a straight line, you yeah, only had a couple of k's left. But then uh, that was short lived. You know, going straight into the, the tide, the current, the rip, and then the wind just started pumping. I had to throw every positive thought into the swim and then you know the white the whiteboard of the messages just gave me another power you know from JP son and my and, and my brothers and and Bridget and the boys just sent me these incredible messages and and friends from all over the world was just giving me that real motivation you know, I think at one point uh, you you know you still uh, threw us and let's focus on your stroke because my stroke started getting messy and it was just no ways I could get it in, into a rhythm and then again I just started having fun um, and I think the reality of it when uh, Michelle pointed out to the windmills and just saying, you know, just point for the windmills and, just, you know, for two hours being in the same spot was self-destroying because I knew that I wasn't going anywhere. Um, you know, 20 k's in three hours, I knew those the, 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 the next two hours I literally didn't move. It felt like I was swimming uphill. It felt like the ledge in Molokai, uh, but at just a different level with swell and waves. Um, and then as we started turning, uh, land started getting further away from me and I thought, how long have I got? How much 
how much power do I have within me? And then again, got myself into a mental group and just said, stop moaning, let's get this done. Um, and, and as we started getting closer to land, um, I think that the turning point was when eventually we saw the lighthouse. The other big thing is we went from 13 degrees and in the middle of the ocean we were at 16, so it was, it was really nice. But then the last seven Ks was dropped down to 13. So that actually woke me up and said, listen, you need to up your speed here, um, up your stroke rate to, to keep warm. Um, and then the lights are sort of drifting away again. I'm going, oh, I can't do more mind games. And I just said, guys, I want to go the shortest route. Uh, swimmers not knowing what the shortest route is, I just pointed towards land. And that's when Grant put the tender in. And I just said, listen, I, I need to get into shore now. Temperature's dropped. I'm shattered. Let's just break this. And I never knew that the Rory Rip is one of the, the toughest rip tides um, on, on, on the South Island. Um, and as I got close to the uh, lighthouse, I knew this enough, I need to dig deep. In the next hour, normally when you're coming to the beach, you've got swell behind you, you've got tide coming in. It was all against me, waves, it was the rip that was against me and I was going from side to side. As I pushed through, I started breaking the, that rip. And I think uh, on the map now, I realized how hectic it was because that last 200 meters took me 45 minutes. And then as I got close to the beach, I just, just broke down into tears, super emotional, you know, also realizing that, you know, two years today, uh, my dad uh, had passed and how special he was. Um, and just going through the life moments and what I learned through his legacy um, and what uh, a fatherhood and a brother and a mother and, and what a family means really pushed me through and I just broke down on the beach, started crying um, and getting back into the boat and just uh, wishing to, to get warm and I got into that boat and I think it was an emotional, emotional team hug. We all broke down because it just really battered and bruised us. Like no other swim can prepare you for what we went through. But as a team, Michelle and, and you Andrew just really got me through. Um, your motivation and just pushing through, you picked me up from the bottom and you, you got me through was like one of the things I'll never forget because you really got me through one of the toughest moments of my life in the swimming environment and that's always be, be, uh, be grateful. And to get onto the boat, <laughs> I was shattered. I was broken, mentally, physically abused from, from the cook straight. So I was humbled. I was basically, it felt like the ocean spat me out uh, onto the beach. Um, if anyone feels like um, being shipwrecked and uh, you're in that survival mode, that's what it felt like. <laughs> so well done, Tony. Number five's done. Um, many years, many threatening hours to get to this point. You me always love coming to different countries. Yeah. How was New Zealand and the New Zealand hospitality for you? We really, just get uh, absolute goosebumps. I mean, you know, through your friendship with uh, um, Ralph and Michelle, we spoke about this five years ago. Um, and just coming to New Zealand, starting there, absolutely out of this world. Um, it is, I would say, you know, one of the probably the most beautiful countries I've ever traveled to. The people, the culture, um, everything, and then just coming back, you know, bringing South Africans together um, with an open mind, a heart, and just incredible energy. I feel like part of their family, and opening up your home to us to to do one of the biggest challenges of our lives, and to be so incredible, you know, opening up home and just cooking and, and making sure that we were comfortable. I've never experienced such hospitality, um, which I'll never forget, bottom of my heart, like uh, I, find, I feel like Rolf and, and, and Michelle, like a brother and sister, like I've known them for years. So just to have that part of the swim gives me goosebumps to, and to have this experience. Because you, you know, you, you, we planned five years to get here. Um, and just to get an opening and to travel, you know, 30 hours, uh, to, for a window period where you might not even get into the water, it's one hell of an emotional roller coaster. You just get welcomed um, to such a beautiful place. Um, and, you know, part of nature, the beauty, the surroundings uh, was absolutely probably one of the highlight trips of my life. Um, 
So absolutely spectacular and honoured uh, to have um, them part of our, our, our family, you know, and giving them positive vibes and energy was just spectacular. You know, just glad to say that number five's done. Um, also was really cool to sign our name in the Irish pub in Picton and had a, a special friend who's in New Zealand, Cameron, uh, who's done the Ocean 7. Uh, one extreme amazing athlete, just so spending time with him for the last two days or day and a half was spectacular. Um, and going in and just speaking, you know, when you know, my dad always said, Show me your friends and I'll show you where you're going. And one of the highlights, and I put it on, on my social blog, that you know, the 10 lessons that I learned from the swim is your crew in your life is the most important part that your family, your friends, the people you hang around, the energy that you hang around. And then hanging around with people that are doing incredible things and learning from them. One of the thoughts that I had in the swim that my dad was in my mind, because uh, I was swearing at him and saying, you know, why are you not making this easy for me? Why are you not opening the winds and the channels and, and all of those things? And he just said, shrink, Tony, I'm making you tougher. So, you know, this is the build up to the North Irish and uh, just going to carry on my training with my crew in, in Unsagri um, and being part of nature, eating well, training hard and uh, let, letting the next 16 months of training get into the North Irish for, for next year and hopefully Zuguru um, that will happen in the next 12 months. There we go bro, big congrats, congratulations buddy. Oh. <laughs> Thanks boy. Wait, 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 wait. Well, yeah. well done. This is going to make such a huge difference in my life. I am currently taking care of my uncle. Um, he had stroke in December. So now it's been very difficult for me to be able to take care of him because we do not have access to clean water. So now that we've got this, we will be able to make sure that he gets everything that he needs and clean food and his clothes are washed. Thank you very much. She thought she was your